Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. This time we will be trying to create Doctor Strange portal effect using Unity. I recommend you follow through with this tutorial and then after create your own textures and edit the particle systems to better fit your art style. In this tutorial we will see how we can achieve the look of the portal with very basic textures. I have created a more close visual representation of the portal for my patrons. If these files interest you, please consider becoming one and you'll also gain access to a lot more cool game dev content like 3D assets and abilities from popular video games. Alright, let's do this. Here I am on a rather empty project. All I have set up is a plane with a checker material. Create a new empty game object and call it portal, then reset its position and I'm just going to drag it up here a little bit. Okay, create a new c script and call it strange portal. Assign it to our portal game object, then open it using your coding software of choice. There are a couple things this script will do for us. First, it will evenly place the sparks around the portal based on a value we select. This script will also scale up or down the portal in runtime so that you can animate it pretty easily. And lastly, it will rotate our portal over time. Okay, let's set up some variables. We will need a float called scale and I will turn it into a slider by adding this right above it. Down here we will add a few more floats. Spark spin speed, ring spin speed, and scale speed. I think these are pretty self-explanatory, but you'll see what they do in a second. An integer called spark amount, a game object called spark effects, and two transforms. Inside start, we need to assign these two transforms, and yes, we have yet to create these game objects in the project, so remember these names. Scroll down and create a new function called create sparks around point. This is exactly what this function is supposed to do. Inside here we run a loop using the spark amount. First we need to find the spawn position of this specific spark by calculating the amount of sparks we have on the current loop. After we have created and assigned the correct position, we need to rotate it so that it is facing the right way. I could spend the next 5 minutes talking in detail about these calculations, but I don't want the video to be so long so let's just move on. Add the function inside start and let's do update now. In here we need to scale the portal to the scale value using the scale speed variable which we will set on the inspector later. We also need to rotate both the spark and ring game objects. And that is pretty much it for the script. Before I hop back into Unity I'm going to create two textures which will be available for you to download in the description down below or you can just make them yourself, they are actually quite simple. One is a straight white line with a transparent background and the other one is a bunch of lines crossing each other. Kinda like lightning, but not really. <laughs> I made this in like a minute, so please spend more time with yours. Back in Unity I will import these textures and enable alpha is transparency for both of them. Cool. Now if you remember we need these two game objects, so create them as a child of our portal real quick. The names must match. Create a new particle system and call it spark effects. I'm going to dim the light a bit so we can see it better. Under shape, set its radius to be the minimum and rotation to be 90. Set duration to 2 seconds and lifetime to be in between 1 and 2 seconds, same with speed. For its start size, we will do 0.3 and 0.8. Set simulation space to world, so that when we move the game object, particles that have already been created continue their own trajectory. Create a new material for the line texture. Make sure you have selected the unlit shader and surface type to transparent, and drag our texture here. For color mode, set it to additive. Assign this to our particle system. Change the render mode to stretch billboard and then drag the spark effects into your project folder to create a prefab. Now make sure the prefab's position and rotation are set to zero. Remove the spark effects from your scene 
and let's set up the values in our script. Scale to 1.5, spark spin speed to 20, ring speed to 200, scale speed to 1, spark amount to 10, and drag our spark effects prefab in here. I'm going to hit play real quick so we can make sure the script is working correctly. Yep, it's all looking like it is. Let me just open this real quick and you can see all 10 sparks inside this game object. Alright, let's group select them all and enable color over lifetime. We will place a marker on the middle so that we can fade it in and out. Now select whatever color you wish it to be. I'm going to do something like this for now. Okay, it is too bright, so I will change the material from additive to multiply and make the colors a bit brighter. Now you can play around with the start size and start speed to fit whatever look you want. I'm just going to leave it mine like this for now. Go on to emission and set the rate over time to be a higher value if you wish. I'm going to go back to color over lifetime and trying to make it look slightly better. Also keep in mind, whenever you scale the portal too big, our sparks will look a bit out of place. So you could increase the spark amount here, or just increase the particle's lifetime. Alright, that is looking pretty good. So before you stop the game, make sure you copy the particle system component and paste the values to your prefab, because when you change stuff in-game, it does not change it for your prefabs. Now we can stop it. Let's set the spark amount to 20, then hit play again. Now let me move it a bit so you can see it is not currently interacting with the plane in our level, so let's change that by adding collisions. Set the type to world and bounce to 0.1. Let's check it out now. Cool, it's working as intended. Inside our ring speed control game object, Create a new trail and set its position to 1 on the X axis, so we can see it rotating. We have to create a new material for this trail, so just like we did with the spark lines, we will create a new only transparent material with the texture we created earlier. Assign this material to the trail and now we can see it looks much better. I'm going to change its width a bit. 0.4 looks to work just fine. Time, it is better to leave it at a low value if your portal is not spinning fast so that we can actually see it spinning because otherwise the trail would just overlap itself. Let's change the color a bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Lastly, we need to create a new particle system to blend both the sparks and lines together nicely. Just like the trail set its position to 1 on the x-axis so that it spins around with our trail. For the shape, set it to sphere and its radius and thickness to the minimum possible. Duration to 2 seconds and lifetime to a value between 1 and 2. For start speed, we will do something very slow. Awesome. Set its simulation space to world. For its material, I will use the default particle system. You could also create your own texture and material to use here, but for the sake of not making this video too long, I will use the default one. Enable color over lifetime and make the particle fade out. Change the color as well to fit your portal. Great, let's increase the rate over time a little. That's too much. Okay, good. I'm going to make the start size a random between these two values. 
Oh yeah, that looks much better. Okay, now since we are in play mode, the trail and particle system we created will be gone after we stop playing the game. So we need to copy this to stop play mode and you can see they're gone now. So all we're gonna do is just paste, make them a child of this game object and fix their scale, rotation and position. Hit play real quick to make sure it's all looking good. Oh yeah, that's great. Another thing you could do is add another trail like this. Let me disable this so we can see them better. Duplicate the trail, lower their time and set the duplicate X position to be minus one so that it is on the opposite side of the circle. Now we have this. Pretty cool, right? You could also do it with the fire, but uh, it does not look that good, to be honest. Unless you make your fire better than the shitty one I just made. Now, go play around with the spin speed and scale and particle colors and so on. That pretty much wraps up this tutorial. I would recommend you to go watch some tutorials on how to make a portal render texture. I think Brachius has a really good one. I will leave a link in the description down below so you can go try it out. If you want these two portals I have created, consider becoming a patron. You can gain access to these project files as well as many other cool things we have created in the channel related to game development. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.